Hi guys, Ross here. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're all having an amazing day wherever you are in the world. Today we're going to be looking at how to create this foggy forest in Cinema 4D, specifically focusing on how to use redshift environments. This should be a really useful video for kind of creating atmosphere in your renders and just really helping to add a bit more mood and ambience to your work. So hopefully the video is helpful. Before I dive into it, I do just want to quickly mention that I have recently set up a Discord server. I saw a couple comments on some of my videos about kind of creating up a Discord to be able to drop in questions, show work, ask for feedback, and that's what I've done. So if you feel like joining, we've got a really nice community over there. I think we're at about 200 people now, which is just crazy. Um, and it's really cool. You can drop in your work, ask for feedback, just ask general kind of 3D questions. Or if you just want a general chin wag, feel free to join. I'm going to drop the link in the description below. So without further ado, I'm going to stop waffling and let's jump straight into the video. So we're in Cinema 4D and as you can tell, I've finally upgraded to R25. It's been a long time coming, but I thought I'd finally take the plunge and here we are. So if the layout looks a little bit different, that's the reason why, but hopefully you'll be able to find whatever I'm doing in whatever software or version of cinema you are using. So this is the scene we're going to be making today and let me just quickly show you around my scene. So let me just jump out the camera and this is the setup. So what we have is a floor with a displacer. We're just using a generic kind of wavy turbulence noise to drive that. And then I've duplicated it without the displacer and that is our water, which you're kind of seeing here. I've then scattered a bunch of grass using Quixel and some matrixes. And then for the trees, we're using Forester with a multi-cloner just to scatter it along the floor. Um, I removed all the leaves as well, just to give it kind of a moodier, darker feel to it. Um, like, you know, all the leaves have fallen off. So that is the scene. Oh, and then there's some tree stumps as well from Quixel. So it's a pretty basic scene, but most of the magic is being driven through this redshift environment. So let me just quickly show you in the render view um, what this looks like with and without the environment. So I'm just going to turn off bucket rendering for the sake of time. And let's have a look at what's going on here. So it's just going to take a second to render. And this is obviously with the Redshift environment. So let's just take a screenshot quickly and let's just disable that environment. Let it render again and it should look worlds apart. So this is it without the Redshift environment. So obviously this doesn't quite look as exciting as it does with that environment added. So let me show you how to set this up. So I'm actually going to delete that current Redshift environment. So now all we're using is a redshift sky and sun, and this has kind of just been rotated ever so slightly. So imagine the sun is kind of up in the top left, casting these shadows across. Um, all the settings are pretty much the same. All I've done is reduce the intensity to 0.5, reduce the horizon height so we don't kind of get a black line in the back. Um, and then I shifted it to more of a bluer tone. So I just made that minus 0.1, and then I dropped the saturation to 0.5. Um, aside from that, everything else is the same. So let's go ahead and add our Redshift environment. So we can do that by going up to Redshift Objects and Redshift Environment. And straight away, you're going to see our image is completely blown out. And this is perfectly fine. Don't worry, you haven't done anything wrong. All we need to do is go to Scattering and just reduce this way, way down. So at the moment, it's 0.1, which may not sound like a big value, but actually, it really is. Obviously, you can tell from the result we're getting. Uh, but let's just drop this down to something like 0.001, which is pretty much as low as we can go with our Redshift environment. And straight away, you're going to see we have a much nicer result. And quickly, before I go any further, I'm actually going to just disable um, some of these assets here. Uh, let me just, I've completely messed this up. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Just to kind of speed things up a little bit, we don't need those additional details in our scene. Okay, so here is the result we're getting at the moment with a 0.001 scattering um, contribution. But say this is a little bit too much and we want to reduce it even more. Obviously, we've dropped this down pretty much as low as we can go without kind of adding an extra zero and then we just get the result saying zero. Um, it's not really very user friendly. so. We'll just keep that as 0.001 and what we can actually do is go to our light. In this case, we're going to be going to the Redshift Sun and going to Details and under Contribution, you have this Volume tab. By default, this is set to 1 
And what we can actually do now is actually just reduce this to even further reduce the amount of redshift environment we're getting in our scene. So usually what I'll do is I'll drop the redshift environment all the way down, see the result I'm getting, and then I'll tweak the light accordingly. And then you can kind of just create a juggling act between the two to get the result you want. So I'm pretty happy with how this is looking right now. You can see if I kind of tweak this slider, you can affect how intense this environment's gonna be. Um, and I'm happy with 0 0.5 for now. Not zero, 0, 0.5. Cool, so there's a few things we can do to make this environment feel a bit more realistic, a bit more natural. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually add a noise to break up that redshift environment. For display purposes, I'm actually gonna bump this up. So let's try something like 0.06 and just make that a little bit more intense. And this is just gonna to help to kind of demonstrate uh, the next step in this. So all we're gonna do is, you can see I've already created a couple, is go to redshift, utilities, and noise volume. And this is going to create a noise volume material. All we're going to do is just drag and drop that onto our redshift environment. And you can see already that it's actually broken up that redshift environment. And you can see already how it's reduced our redshift environment. And we're actually getting some kind of noise scattered through that redshift environment just to break it up a little bit. And actually, I'm quite happy with this, with this result. But I'm actually just going to show you some of the parameters you can tweak um, and just kind of make this a little bit more obvious as to what it's doing. So... First of all, you have color one, color two, just like any other noise. And because we have added that material, we're actually gonna use these noise later on to kind of drive the color of our environment. But let's just kind of demonstrate a bit more about what this noise is doing. So let's change this min value to 0 0.5, um, maybe something like 0 0.2. And you can see how this is breaking up our noise. We're getting those kind of brighter and darker patches, which is obviously being driven by our color one and color two. So Color one, which is black, is obviously removing any of that redshift environment, which is why you're seeing some of the spots kind of disappear. And then white is just staying as normal. Um, you can go into your noise, you can change the complexity, the amplitude gain, the frequency, um, just to kind of really affect. So you can see as I slide this around, it becomes more frequent. Um, so you can really go in here and kind of dial in some extra details. But the main things that I will play with are the colors, obviously to affect the tint of our redshift environment, but also the coordinates. So I could go into the overall scale and this kind of works the opposite way that you would think it would work. So if I do 0.001, that's actually gonna make the noise larger. Um, and if I go up to something like 0.05, now the noise is really, really small and you can see we're kind of getting loads of little dots where it's breaking it up. Um, but if you've used Redshift before and used the materials and stuff, you'll kind of be used to this workflow. Um, I'm actually going to leave it at 0.01. I think that looks pretty decent. Actually, I might drop it down to 0.007, just to make it a little bit larger. Cool, so you can see how that's really breaking it up and it's looking really nice. I'm going to go back to color and just change the min value to zero. So now we're getting this kind of, so now we're getting this effect where it's just broken up ever so slightly and it just helps to add a little bit more detail. So the next thing we want to do is just tint this environment and this is really going to add some more interest to our render. At the moment it looks cool but we really want to create that moody kind of ambience to our render. So we're going to go into our color one and I've got a couple values I've jotted down from my original render. So let's go for 210, 40 and 40. That's going to give us like a blue tint but it hasn't really done much because it's still balancing between that blue and that white. And white is obviously a much brighter color than this dark blue, so that's gonna be more prominent in our, in our render. So let's go to color two, and we're gonna change this to 224, 25, and 50. And now you can see we've got a completely different feel to our environment. And actually, because we've now used this noise volume shader, the redshift environment is a lot darker, it's a lot dimmer. So we can probably actually get away with cranking our redshift environment up a little bit. But before we do that, I wanna talk about these other two settings here. So let's talk about phase. Phase essentially is going to affect how close or how far away the redshift environment comes to your camera. So if I put this to something like 0 0.5, it's actually not gonna to do too much because our scattering is so low. So let's try 0 0.2 and have another go at this. So let's set this back to zero. And you can see as I drag this slider, it's kind of affecting how far away or how close 
to the camera of our redshift environment is becoming. So you can see, as I started to go into the minus values, it's actually pushing that redshift environment away from us. So you can use this to kind of affect how, how intense the environment is. But also, if you didn't want the foreground to be affected by the environment, you can use this to really kind of drive that back. And then vice versa, we can push this to the front. If you go too much, it is actually going to reduce it back down again. Um, so it's kind of around like 0 0.5 where it's like most intense. So I'm actually going to leave that at zero for this particular example, but obviously you could play with that to really affect the look you want to go for. I'm also going to drop this back down to 0 0.06. I just kind of bumped it up for demonstration purposes. So the next value is attenuation. Now, I don't know kind of the ins and outs of how this works, but from my understanding, essentially this is going to kind of block out the direct light coming through your fog. So I think the best way for me to actually explain this is to actually just do it and show you the results. So I'm going to try something like 0 0.025. It might help if I actually press enter. There we go. Let's try that again. And you can kind of see what I mean. Like we're not seeing any of that white light coming in from our redshift environment. Instead, now it's just almost put up like a barrier and it's making the fog feel a lot thicker which obviously for this example is perfect because it's really helping to add that ambience and that moody feel to the forest. So if I play with the slider of this attenuation, you can kind of see how it's working. It's blocking out that light. And if I go too much, it just makes it completely black um, or just completely dark. And this actually is giving us quite a cool effect because we're seeing the God rays come in from our light source. So. You can create some really cool effects using this and just from when I actually built this file I know the value I used was 0 0.025 and obviously now we have dimmed the redshift environment so we could probably bump this up to like something like 0 0.01 just to brighten that up and now we've got this nice blend of quite a thick fog but also it feels quite light we have a nice blue tint to it and we're getting like this subtlety of the god rays come in from the trees um, and from the light source. Let's just turn on the rest of the layers and kind of look at the final piece. And then I think it will be a wrap. So we're just going to give that a minute to load. So we have a grass, we have our little tree stumps in there, uh, some swamp grass as well. And that is how I created a really moody forest using Redshift environments in Cinema 4D and Redshift. So I think that's pretty much everything. I think I've covered the main kind of features of the Redshift environment. Obviously, there's more we could dive into, but I'll save that for future videos. If you did enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button. I really, really do appreciate it. And it helps to kind of boost my YouTube videos and put them out there into the ether of YouTube. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below if you enjoyed the video or if you have any questions. Or feel free to join the Discord server and we can have a little chinwag there. Um, it would be great to see all of your lovely faces over there. Finally, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future content and hit that notification bell so you know when I next upload. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and until next time, peace.